Hello my friends, what's going on? So a quick update video here, just giving you all a sort of check in on what's going on. I'm going to talk about some exciting updates to my website, playsongnotes.com, where I'm making it easier for you to find PDFs for all the lessons I'm making. I'm also going to answer a few questions that you all have sent in over the past month, right? But before I get to those, let me do a quick rundown of all the new lessons and PDFs I've made over the past month. That's August 2019, in case you missed any of them. So here's a quick rundown. Let's see them. California dreamer. Such a winter's day. I stopped in to a chip. Instead of using all six strings as you normally would, we're going to just be focusing on the thinnest four strings. We're going to play them with our uh, middle and index fingers here. And that's going to free up these two fingers to add some sort of melody flourish notes. Chefs and kicked in my face, but I've come through. We are the champions, my friend. And we when you're ready, bring in the up strums. Right? And remember that the PDFs for each of these are available through my website, playasongnotes.com. Thanks to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon. And of course, all the other 135 PDFs I have are also available there as well. Okay, so speaking of my website, I want to talk about some quick updates I've been making to make it easier for you all to find these PDFs. That's one of the areas of feedback that I've consistently been getting over the past couple months is that, you know, uh, love the lessons, Love the PDFs, but I'm having a hard time finding, you know, back catalog stuff, right? And as my library grows, this becomes more and more of a problem. So I'm realizing for too long I had sort of uh, been planning to do some big update redesign sometime in the future. Uh, plenty of notes and ideas have been collected from me on that, but then I realized like that's not doing anyone any good if it's going to take months to get there. So instead, I've started making some really quick updates. So let me show them to you right here, okay? So if you load playsongnotes.com in your browser, and if you're on your desktop, you're going to notice these links at the top, right? Um, songs, warm-up exercises, tips and techniques, and practice log, as well as a link to PDFs right here. If you click on the PDFs link, pretty much everything you see here on this page will link you out to that Patreon page where you can find the, uh, the PDF for that song, right? So if I want to get a Hotel California, click on that. It's going to take me to Patreon. I'm logged in and you want to look for this attachment right here, okay? So that's how you're going to do it. And these are all the song lessons. I also do warm-up exercises, you know, each of these has PDFs as well. Um, and I have practice log entries, each of these are, you know, and there's a video lesson to accompany all these for sure. But the idea is that uh, Patreon is what's hosting the PDF, so I have to link you out there. But the other exciting thing I've added is up here, if you are to click on songs, for example, it's just right now it's linking you to the main page and this big list of songs that are by song title. I added this little indicator and the, the yellow highlighted PDF thing pretty much means that that lesson has a PDF available, right? Now I have some lessons that don't yet have PDFs. So if we look at Badlands by Bruce Springsteen, for example, um, you know, you can view, watch my video on it, um, but you're gonna see this link right here. And this is a new update as well. Every song that does not have a PDF yet will have this module on the page. So it'll just make it crystal clear, like, hey, it's not yet available. And I legitimately do plan on going through my back catalog and sort of adding PDFs for some of these older lessons. If you want to get a lesson sort of uh, request, you know, you can request one to happen quicker. I'm having, I have a list of, you know, back catalog uh, songs I want to turn into a PDF sooner than later. Feel free to do that. But otherwise, you know, if you do click on a song that has a PDF, like Banana Pancakes here, 
you'll see right here, PDF link for Patreon supporters. So again, my main point here is every lesson I put out is, has a page on my website. And on that page, you're either gonna see a link to directly to Patreon right there, or you're gonna see an indicator that a lesson is not, a PDF is not yet available and you can request one. So just wanted to give that heads up because I really want the website to be something that you can use to find the new stuff, right? And it's just gonna be a, an easier way than, than patreon.com will be. So that's, uh, that's the progress so far. I have a lot more in store for this. Uh, so look for that and I'll keep you posted through videos like this, right? But next let's look at some uh, questions and uh, you all have been asking and I'll give you some answers where I can. So one comes in from Lewis. Lewis, you wrote, uh, you know, I continue to enjoy and get a lot out of your lessons. Thank you, Lewis. Um, so thanks, you're welcome. Uh, why did you change the way you do tabs with the handwritten numbers? So what Lewis is talking about here is the formatting of the PDFs I've been putting out. Um, I'm constantly experimenting, right? And uh, I, I was in a nice groove for a while where each PDF sort of looked like this, you know? I'm putting them together, you know, it's all by hand and it's not, I'm not just copying and pasting stuff I find elsewhere. It's, it's all really coming, coming through me. I want it to be nicely curated, right? But in the last couple of weeks, uh, last couple of months, I've been experimenting with a format that might look like this or like this or like this, right? So I'm doing these a bit more by hand. I'm using my iPad and the Apple Pencil and I have a nice little workflow. The quick reason I'm doing this is just, honestly, I'm, I'm experimenting. I'm trying out a different workflow for myself. And, and I think one of the driving forces here is um, I sit at a computer a lot of the day for my full-time job and the idea of writing up tabs and my computer at home, you know, at night, it just, it, it kinda is not something I look forward to. Like, I don't, I don't wanna sit at a computer any more than I have to. And the iPad is great because I can use that, you know, sitting at the kitchen table, at the counter, on the couch. Um, it's a lot more flexible. It feels more natural to me. I also like the, the visual, I don't know, the, the PDFs I'm creating with this feel more distinct. I'm more proud of them, right? I try to make sure they're still legible and readable and valuable. It's the same information. But um, I don't know, I, I just, I'm kind of indulging a little bit right now, trying it out. Any feedback you all have, I would love to hear. Uh, I've never messed with Guitar Tab Pro or however the folks create those sort of like uh, very digitized um, tabs that you'll see like in guitar magazines. I've never messed with that. Um, maybe I will one day, I don't know. Something about that feels more mechanical and I kind of like the idea of the, the authenticity of, of the handwritten notes. But again, that's just me and uh, I would love any feedback you all have, right? But it's all one big experiment. Um, trying to find stuff that I can turn around lessons quickly in that uh, works with my process of learning songs. And, um, you know, I'm sure things will continue to evolve. All right. So another question comes in from Robert here. Uh, so he was talking about the Cat Stevens lesson for the wind that I did. And he asks, on the D add five, I'm having trouble getting the pinky over. So what he means by that is going from a, you know, a regular D and a D add five would be put your pinky on the fifth fret of the thinnest string. Right? This is definitely a stretch for your pinky, right? Now what he says is, I've solved this if I lift my ring finger up, okay? So I'm lifting that off the second string and I replace it with my middle finger, right? So what he's gonna, what he's, I assume what he's talking about here is doing this. So he's basically doing index finger on the third string, second fret, middle finger is on the second string, third fret, and then the pinky's up here. This definitely makes the pinky stretch easier because basically you're, instead of your hand being sort of down here and you're having to, to reach the pinky, you're kind of shifting your whole hand a little bit by putting your middle finger right here. You can totally do this. You know, um, he, he asks, is uh, this gonna cause any big problems? Um, I don't think so. I, I think that, you know, if this, if you need to play that chord, if you wanna play it, uh, this is totally a legit way to do it. Um, I will, there's two things I'll say about this. One is the downside of doing this is that you can't necessarily easily go back to this shape, right? That's kind of a more of a more of a transitional difficulty. And if you need that in the song, right? Some songs Some songs you need to do that. You need to go from the D at 5 to the D sus 4 to the D to the D sus 2. Uh, so in that scenario, it's kind of good to play it as I'm doing it here. But what you're doing works just fine if you don't need to go to a, to a regular D quickly, right? So if you're just playing the D at five, you can totally do this. Now the cool thing about this technique though, and what I like about this, is this is a great bridge into learning the technique of barring the thinnest three strings with your index finger and then adding your middle finger on the uh, second string, third fret, right? So I'll do this a lot actually because it lets you it 
it lets you do other cool stuff with different triads, right? So this is a this is one way to play D. Basically, bar the thinnest um, three strings on the second fret, on the third fret, second string, add your middle finger, and then you can put your pinky down for the D F five if you want, right? Um, but you can do cool stuff like going to this G or going to this A, right? You can play a G up here, play an A up here, and then play a D up here. Right? All those, I'm barring the thinnest three strings with my index finger. So this technique you asked about, it's a nice little gateway into that, right? So I hope that's helpful for you, Robert, and uh, don't sweat it too much if you can't do it like this. Uh, it's not necessarily worth beating yourself up over. It's definitely a, a, a tough stretch, but um, yeah, so I hope that helps, right? Uh, and one more, this is from Ken. Ken Roy writes, um, uh, I just joined. Thank you, Ken. Thanks for joining. I hope you find everything helpful. The first thing I opened after Country Roads was the A major trick for crammed fingers. I've been slow transitioning to E major from A, and this cured my problems. Um, this is a huge deal for me. Uh, I'm almost a newbie. Any suggestions on where to start? So first up, um, what, what he's talking about here is this lesson. So if I go to my website, and I'm going to go over to Tips and Techniques, and I'm going to look up how playing A major with big fingers on a small fretboard. So I did this lesson back in November of last year, and it talks about this way to play A. Instead of playing it like this, where basically you're going to uh, put your three fingers in a row, right, on the second fret of the second, third, and fourth string, you're going to basically make this like triangle, right? And what this does is it sort of, um, it gets the fingers out of each other's way and it kind of makes them more room. It's, it's more efficient, right? And the cool thing about it, as I show in this lesson, is it makes transitions between A, D, and E easier because look, as I go from the A, I can go to an E and my index finger is staying on the uh, third string. And it also, that's true for the D, right? So here, 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 here. My index finger is always on the same string. That makes transitioning very easy, right? So um, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad, Ken, that you found that lesson helpful. Anyone else who's having trouble with A, give that a shot, right? If you have bigger fingers or a smaller guitar, it's a nice way to sort of um, make things just feel more cozy and comfortable, because that's, that's kind of the idea. It shouldn't be a struggle to play all this stuff, uh, ideally. So um, now, the second part of your question, Ken, is uh, suggestions on where to start. Um, this is one of those things where I would love to update my website eventually to sort of have, um, you know, three chord songs or, you know, songs that use A, D, and E. That would be a great, um, a great example of um, giving some feedback that, from feedback you all have sent that I would like to do. I don't have that yet. Now, um, I did send these to you on Patreon, Ken, but um, some songs are ones like Mamas Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up To Be Cowboys or... Um, the Gambler by Kenny Rogers. Both these songs are gonna use D, G, and A, right? D, G, and A, three chord songs. And you can kind of use a simple strum. I show those in my lessons. I have lessons for each of those songs, by the way. Um, I would check out songs like that, uh, but I'll keep this in mind for sure as I think about how I'm, how I'm organizing the, the lessons on my website. Another thing I did send you is this Justin K Sanderco website. Justin is the, the master as far as I'm concerned. And let me fix this here. So basically, he has this page, and I sent this along to you, where basically he is um, easy songs for stage one. And just look at these sort of titles. He's talking about the D chord, the A chord, fun play along with A and D, the E chord, you know, um, anchored fingers. I'm assuming he's talking about the same thing I did. He talks about all these songs here, right? I think this is an example of you learn three chords, you can start to play cool stuff. So uh, now Justin is, again, uh, I can't recommend his stuff enough. Check out his website. Uh, this is a great way to sort of organize songs uh, in a way where, hey, I know three chords, give me some songs to play. That's what I'm talking about here. So um, check out that link, Ken, and I hope it's helpful for you. So that's going to be it for today's video. Um, questions for next time I do this, shoot them uh, in the comments of this video or email me or put them on Patreon. I will gladly uh, read those over and I'll pick out some for next time. But thanks all for watching. Um, I hope you're uh, enjoying the lessons. Plenty more to come as always, and I'm looking forward to September. It is very hot here in Austin and uh, I can't wait for the fall to arrive. So that's it. Have a good one. Bye-bye.